last weekend I found uh, this, which is a lovely little Bell and Howell speaker cabinet. Here's another car. Um, so, yeah, that um, had a 12 inch speaker in it, or has a 12 inch speaker in it, and you can see I've started to rough it out because I'd like to um, use this for something else. So forgive its condition for now. Um, but the lovely thing is, one second. Do, 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 do. So it came with this rather lovely Goodman's, looks like a Goodman's, uh, fan frame, 12 inch Alnico speaker, which I believe, do, 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 I'm gonna put it on the floor before I drop it. Um, yeah, there we go. So I believe that they used those occasionally in AC, Vox AC 15 and AC 10 in the early days um, as well. So if I can get that working um, with the amp that I've got in mind, it's gonna be a blinder. So that was a score, because that was on Marketplace, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Here comes a car, what can it be? Oh, I bet that was a Mondeo. That one sounded more like a, a Renault, I'm bullshitting. Yeah, so that was on um, Facebook Marketplace, 14 pounds, which is good. But then we come to the they're not so good. You can probably see it laying next to the amplifier there. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> breathe, 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 breathe. See, this stress won't help me. Won't help me. So, it is what it is, work motto. This. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. Do you recognise this? This is the fingerboard from Norfolk, which I've had to take off because, um, well, the truss rod snapped, basically, which didn't really help. I'm going to put my speaker over here and face the sander. There we go. Oh, this place is a mess. Um, yeah, so I had to remove it. Um, luckily, I use animal glues, hide glues, for the main bits of my guitars. I use a little bit of tight bond elsewhere, but the main joints are hide glue, which means that when you put, uh, well, it dissolves in, in hot water and steam so that you can gently if you if you're very careful get a scraper one of these uh, a palette knife very fine get that in between lots of hot water lots of heat gently start to prise that up and you can very carefully I'll show you what I've done and it's it's as neat as I can hope for it looks it looks fine it looks great luckily so no none of the mahogany from the neck has come off on the fingerboard and none of the rosewood is on the neck which is great um so hopefully i'm going to get away with this one so yeah the truss rod um it didn't snap it's separated from the little plate that anchors the anchor plate that anchors into the body i don't know it's not peened properly which is where you hammer something and it just bends the head the, the, if you have to ask i probably can't explain it properly um or if it's a weld, we'll find out when we take it out. Um, so that was disappointing because I started seeing the action raising on Norfolk and investigated and tried to adjust the truss rod and it... Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Anyway, um, so move on from that, move on from the disappointment and just crack on so I get to do something else which is another repair which is something I'm more you know more experience 
more learning. Um, but I get to tell you people about it. So hopefully when I repair it, I can just airbrush in some nitrocellulose lacquer because that's the other thing I use. And the, and the cellulose lacquer effectively melts into itself because it's got solvent in there, cellulose thinners, it will dissolve and flatten out. And then you can, you know, so it's, it's again, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so they're my two main things for this weekend, next weekend, God knows how many weekends it's going to take. So going back to this speaker cabinet here, Dum, dum, dum. Now, it normally, so you'd undo it here and separate back and front. But what I'd like to do is, let's see if I take that off. Ooh. Take that off, put that, so I've got top half there, bottom half here. And you can see the amplifier that I've bought sits in the bottom half at the moment quite nicely so I'm just going to pop this I will show you around my shed one day uh, pop that up there it won't take long basically just done it so here we have um, a Magnusync or the Moviola Magnusync and I think it's called the 1800 um, so Magnusync amplifiers I think there's one called a URS now they're basically projection um, editing machines or projector machines for 16mm um, film. These are for the bigger projector cutting editing machines, this part here. Um, so you normally see like a green URS it's called, um, but this one, yeah, is a, a larger version. So you get the little ones which have a much smaller speaker in, in a green hammered, hammer tone box. I don't know, the speaker must be like six inch or something, but you can you can carry them around like the old piggyback amplifiers, pop it down, it's got valves in it and you can get a fairly decent sound out of it. Whereas these um, are bigger. I found, I found one before and I have used it with another really great speaker, a Vitavox speaker. And it sounds, for me, it sounds really good. And I will show you, see so you come. Uh, uh, uh. Where should I go? So, if we follow, if we follow the tube chart, which is there, we've got a twelve. 12 AX7, this is a Russian brand. 12 AX7, and he goes in there. And then you can pop his little metal cap on. Ta -da! And what have we got next? Oh, we've got a, these, uh, these valves came with the amplifier, by the way, um, apart from one 6V6 that I had laying around. Um, so Mullard ECC 82, I think that's a 12AU7, let's look, 12AU7, yep, he's going to go into there, donk. What have we got next? Again, another Russian, or USSR, can't even read what it says, Zeritz, Zeritz, Zerix? not sure. Um, now this is the 5Y3 rectifier, and he's going to go in the... So he goes over in here. Da, 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 da. I can get my pin layout right. Uh, 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 uh. Is he going to be in there? There we go. And then we've got two... Um, 6v6 GTA. Oh, that one's made in the USSR, so I might, it might be all right. It was certainly fine for running it, testing it, making sure it works. Um, this one is 
I'm sure this is America made, but I can't see the maker mark on it. But he's going to go in there. I'm sure I've got lots of other 6v6s laying around. Um, and so we've got power switch on, off, volume. Um, and from what I can understand, this is a main control cable that goes to the rest of the projection machine. This is our input, um, a quarter inch input jack. So that's that's good. That's what we need for a guitar. These bits, not sure because I can't really find any manuals about them. So not sure what that does, um, but it's going to be an output or an input for something. So it's either coming back from the main projector, editing kit, what have you. It might even be for something random like a light and it just runs um, some light off there. Again, I'm not a qualified electrician. I know fuck all about this. So I know enough not to kill myself. This is our speaker. And then around the front, we have um, tone. And this is this is just the selector for basically I'm not sure because I don't know enough about what the machine did. I don't know what the projector editing film cutting machine did. I'll post a photo of it though. So I don't understand quite what this amplifier did other than the bits that I need. So the bits that I managed to get to work on the one I've got in the house, I understand them because guitar goes in, tubes go yes, noise comes out of here, and into our speaker. That's all I need to know. So as long as I've got it set on the right thing here and I've got tone or I've got volume and then an off, uh, on off switch, I'm fine. I don't need to know about the 1950s film industry stuff. But the most important thing is we've got a 12, um, well, um, ECC 82 and an 83, two 6v6s and a 5y3. And they were used in some of the best, best, you know, most well-known amplifiers, tweed amplifiers, some of the, you know, again, my memory is really bad. I've lost so much information. I can't remember all the facts. So if I'm saying stuff that is bullshit, I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid saying it, full stop. So if I'm very vague, just forgive me. The tumors are robbing me of a lot of information. My medication is robbing me of even more. So I know what I know. It's in my head though, and I can't get it to come out of my mouth. Um, look at that though, look at that transformer. Robots in disguise. And there's the um, smaller transformer underneath. I'm not gonna take all this out now though. But that is my project, my next project. Um, the only thing is, dum -da -dum, dum -da -dum. so our speaker, it's currently going to smack, it's going to hit, so our magnet, our magnet is going to hit our transformer. Which, which is why I want to change this into this. So lift it up and put effectively a fillet in between, whether it's wood, mesh, who knows. Um, that's the next bit I need to figure out. But I'll raise the top section so that the speaker also is raised and it's just going to miss this. So it's going to be about 80 mil, 100 mil, so four inches. Um, four inches, bad joke. So I've got a good thing. <laughs> and I have a bad thing. Oh, <laughs> it's me. But I thought I'd update you on that. 
Oh, one more thing. I found this. So when you get your, I don't know, new computer screen, I, th I think that might be where this has come from. So your computer monitor, they often send you all, all of the stuff, so the cables, but sometimes they include the European and the American um, spec cables as well. It means I've got a ground, an earthed three prong instead of a two prong American connector, because I forgot to say, this is American 110 volt um, machine. I'm going to use this lead, cut that end off, and use this to give me a grounded and earthed connection. Because look, look at that. It, there's one thing on here. If the rubber here is starting to age to a point where it's cracking, that means everything else in here is going to be doing the same. It's all breaking down. You know, so I'm going to be carefully removing this, which is exactly what I did on my other Magnusync amplifier. And I'll put this through this beautiful little, look at that, isn't that quality? Beautiful little cable holder. And then I'll um, earth to the, there is an earthing point on here somewhere. I think that's actually it. I'm sure I've seen in the few photos there are of it that it earths to there. Yeah, so this sat in front of a much larger green casing, probably, I don't know, a couple of foot by a couple of foot. It's a, it was a big old beast. I used one of my da 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 beautifully engineered pointing stick. It's actually a skewer. I save these things from kebabs. When the children have kebabs for dinner, I'll say, oh, save your sticks, give them to me. And I'll bring them out here, wash them, clean them, and use them for what I need because it's more important to use this stuff, isn't it? Reuse it. Anyway, so these Mallory caps, everything just looks so beautifully made. You know, this was built to last. So it's important that we keep it working. I've gone on for long enough now. That's today's update.